Hello and welcome to Adventure Planet, where today I come to you with just something a little bit different with a news update regarding the imagery that was sent out uh, from Alton Towers earlier this morning uh, with regards to the future of their haunted house. But before I do get to that, though, I'd just like to say I hope everybody is having a fantastic start to 2023. Hope you all had a great Christmas. I know we're pretty much through January now. However, because obviously I'm from the UK and we're completely out of season at the moment. A lot of parks are closed and those that are open actually only offer very uh, kind of restricted ride selections. So content on the channel um, is always going to be lacking around this period of time. So I haven't actually had a chance to wish everybody um, a very happy new year. So I hope you've had a fantastic start. Um, of course, content will start picking up very, very soon. The new season isn't too far away, only March, a couple more months, and then we'll be hitting those parks as per last year, bringing you all the latest and greatest content right here on Adventure Planet. Getting straight back to the imagery that was released by Alton Towers this morning, though, and here we are. This is, of course, the curse at Alton Manor. Um, first kind of imagery or anything that we've really seen so far that's official about what they're actually doing with this ride. Um, and there you go. And I got to say, it looks pretty tasty, right? I love the coloring and stuff. I love the fact we've got what I assume to be Emily Alton at the top there with her eyes covered. We've got the creepy dolls and the toy blocks and stuff there as well. And I've seen kind of rumblings online as well of people saying, well, wait a minute, that's that's a train with a track going into the house. Are we are we are we getting a, 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 a an enclosed roller coaster here? And I, you know, I got to say, if they have put if they have done that, if they've pulled that off. I will be very, very impressed. Um, but no, I, I, let's let's make no mistake about it. We are going to be seeing exactly the same ride system as was with Jewel. And, uh, you know, as far back as obviously the haunted house when it first opened in 1992, I don't believe any of that is going to have changed. There was talk, I do believe, about uh, upgrading certain sensors here and there, maybe some control boxes and control systems and stuff. Um, unsure whether that's actually gone ahead. Uh, but no, we are going to be seeing uh, essentially exactly the same track system as has been there since the beginning. But great piece of marketing, though. I absolutely love this picture. And for those that are kind of more eagle eyed amongst you, I suppose, if you have have a look at that sign on the right side of the house as you look at it there just under where it says for sale it actually says there sparks estates now the sparks group along with the uh, the two swords group and john wardley himself were uh, those that were actually responsible for uh, imagineering i guess the uh, the original haunted house and responsible for some of its manufacture so that's a nice little touch you know i i like this this is good i like these little details this kind of shows that the park you know really cares about this stuff i really really do like that that's very very cool uh, a little bit of history about the ride though yeah like i say it opened back in 1992 the ride system was manufactured by mac rides uh here it is nice picture here from towerstimes.co.uk just how it looked back in 1992 and yeah the facade is going to remain pretty much the same i mean obviously a lot of the climbing ivy and that is now gone and it's looking a little bit faded here and there but i suspect that apart from the crypt out the front with the zombie um, I'm not expecting the facade to actually change very much at all, to be honest. Obviously, every all the big changes has uh, all taken place inside that main show building. Of course, there's been pictures um, over the past few months of skips um, positioned kind of around that show building with bits of theming and bits of scenery that's been kind of ripped up and uh, ripped out of basically uh, what used to be um, Jewel there. Now, I remember I was about 10 years old when I first rode the haunted house, and it wasn't too long after I got back from trips to Florida and California where I'd ridden the, uh, the haunted mansion at uh, both uh, Magic Kingdom and Disneyland. And I got to say, I can remember being just as happy with this ride as I was from those American equivalents. I can remember it was nice and immersive. I got a couple of jump scares out of there. And I remember being pretty spooked as a kid. I, I, I remember it being a solid, solid ride. And of course, in 2003, um, the Haunted House closed and they made this big refurb and turned it into Jewel, which was basically an interactive dark ride. Some of the sound effects were still the same. However, the OST was changed. Um, we had this crypt out the front with the zombie. And the main change was obviously zombies were brought in uh, with targets and the ride was basically a shoot 'em up You had guns in the carriage and uh, it was basically who got the highest score. Now, I got to say, although I enjoyed Jewel, when it comes to haunted houses, I do kind of prefer, you know, 
an experience, you know, where you can just sit back, become really immersed and enjoy a good classic haunted house, you know. And it, it cha- I love an interactive dark ride, don't get me wrong. But yeah, when it changed to Jewel, I, I do remember kind of being a little bit disappointed. And it wasn't a ride that I went on every time I visited the park, purely for um, that reason, really. Um, but of course, as the years went on and as we reported in the vlogs uh, last season... Jewel started to look very, very run down. Uh, It was very dilapidated, very forgotten in certain areas. There were certain animatronics um, that wasn't working inside the ride itself. And it was very clear that something was about to happen. Now, I didn't know whether this was going to be a complete demolition of of the ride itself to be replaced with something completely new um, or whether it was going to be a refurb. Um, a bit a massive refurb into something else and the gloomy wood was going to stay um really didn't quite know at the time however pleased to report obviously that it became the latter so of course everything is going to be remaining this facade possibly removal of the crypt and then we're going to have this brand new dark ride which i gotta say is looking fantastic september obviously saw the closure of jewel Um, And then we started to see, you know, phone numbers popping up, little peepholes appearing in the park where if you look through them, you saw like these little animations playing. It's all been really, really well done. Now, wording from the park, obviously, um, this new ride is going to be delving into the backstory of the manor's sinister past. Uh, Those seeking to brave the the attraction will be treated with special effects and visuals that have never been seen before from a UK theme park. So, yeah, what that could be, I have no idea, Um, but it's an exciting time. Really, really looking forward to getting back into this in the new season and seeing just what they have done inside that show building it's because they say the curse at alton manor is a haunting dark ride taking you on a hair-raising journey through the spectacular twist and turns of the cursed manor and i gotta say it's looking very kind of story based they do mention that it is going to be suitable for both the young and adults alike so i'm not expecting you know a, a load of blood and gore and really strong jump scares or anything like that um i do believe it is still going to be very much a family attraction but of course you know they've all they kind of always have been really that these haunted mansions and the haunted houses but that doesn't mean that they've been you know weak in any way they're always you know when they're well done they are you know absolutely fantastic immersive experiences and i'm looking forward to just seeing what uh, you know obviously the new technology that we have available to us nowadays um, can provide with this thing but that brings me on to um, what could potentially be disappointments for this ride and I gotta say I really hope it's not disappointing I you know like I say we've got some amazing technology available to us today and and as as the uh, the park say we're going to be seeing stuff that's never been seen before um, in in the UK however I just the biggest my dis- biggest disappointment for me would be um if if it becomes too screen heavy let's make sure there's lots of animatronics in there and nothing we're not just kind of sat looking at screens for kind of you know 80 percent of the ride that's the only thing that i think would disappoint me greatly is if it's very very screen heavy i really hope that's not the kind of route that they go down so when are we going to see this? When is going to be the opening date for this attraction? Well, the park haven't actually given us an exact date yet. They're just saying spring. However, I think they would be remiss to not have this open on day one of the new season. I think that's probably what a lot of people are expecting. And I think, you know, considering that if they're making no changes to the facade, everything's gone on inside, I suspect that most of what's being replaced and what's being changed is already in place in that show building. I think, you know, over the past six, what will be seven months, um, you know, when the new season is actually upon us, I think that's going to be more than enough time to get those changes put in place. So I'm holding out for um, this to be open on day one of that new season. And that just about covers it for news on the curse at Alton Manor. Now, the park have said that come February, which is only just a week away, that we will start to see some more news coming from the park, just kind of trickling in. So hopefully that will give us even more of an idea 
uh, of what to expect with the changes inside that show building. It's going to be it's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to this one. This is this is going to be good. Of course, we'll be at Alton Towers a little bit later on in the year. Um, taking my first ride on this, I'll give you my thoughts. Um, and we also have the uh, deconstruction and reconstruction of Nemesis happening next year as well, and possibly. Uh, maybe some landscaping or construction going on for Project Horizon in Costa Corner. Now, there has been a little bit of pushback on uh, the planning permissions for that building that they're actually going to be putting in that area. Um, some of the residents there, um, just, just with a, a couple of concerns that need to be um, resolved before uh, you know planning permission can actually be signed off. I believe the next meeting is the 26th of January. Um, so hopefully there won't be too many delays with that. Hopefully we can start seeing some landscaping, and like I say, maybe some construction towards the latter half of the year. Um, and then in April, we have visits to Europa Park, Fantasialand, F-Telling and Plopsaland Japan, where we'll be bringing you full vlogs of all those parks, checking out the construction over there, as well as any kind of changes, removals, anything else that's new for the 2023 season. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a good year, a very busy year but a very fun year. But I want to thank you so much for watching today's video and for sticking with the channel. And like I say, con more content will be coming to you very, very soon, likely starting with day one of uh, the world of Jumanji at Chessington World of Adventures. Now that is going to be one to watch as well. But until then, thank you so much for watching. And as always, happy riding, everybody. I'll see you soon.